Hello, this is Kathleen of American College Strategies. I'd like to welcome you to the campus of the University of Southern California, USC, home of the Trojans. This is a beautiful campus set in the heart of the city of Los Angeles. It is an urban campus. It's over 200 acres of campus buildings and classrooms, but it is in the heart of Los Angeles. USC was founded in 1880, and at that time, Los Angeles was really kind of still a pueblo. You have to understand that Los Angeles really was the Wild West. And so USC has really grown up with the city, and what you will find is integral links between the city of Los Angeles and USC that harken back to its very, very beginning in 1880. While you think of USC as an athletic powerhouse, what I want you to understand that it is an academic powerhouse now. This year, 2,950 freshmen started on campus. They got here from 47,000 applicants. There was about a 19% acceptance rate for a class of 2,950. And so what you can see from that at a 19% acceptance rate, that USC is a highly selective university. They're looking for SAT scores over 2,003 parts and ACT over 30. While that is the average, that is what students coming here to USC have. And the majority of them are in the top 10% of their class. So what draws a student to USC? That is what my students ask me and what I ask my students when they say, I want to go to USC. USC has branded itself extremely well. The brand USC is known all over the world. And what people think about is their football program, their basketball program. But what I've seen here on campus is so much more. 18 schools of learning, 150 majors, and connections to the world that allow the USC Trojans, when they graduate, to connect to the world. So when a student comes here, usually what they're looking for is a vibrant community, a school where they can really learn across disciplines. USC starts their students, all freshmen, follow a common core. The common core is, includes the humanities, the natural science, and the social sciences, plus two writing classes. So you take two humanities, two social science, two natural science, plus two writing classes. And that's the core that all USC graduates start with. If you're doing AP exams and you have fours or fives, you may get waived out of one of those requirements. In the common core, when you have to take the humanities the social sciences and the sciences, what, what you can do is you're not repeating stuff that you may have taken in high school like your chemistry. They have very unique courses. Here's an example of some of the courses that I have found. Our Monsters Ourselves, an intensive reading program where you're understanding monsters throughout literature and how it relates to yourself. The Science of Happiness, The Art of Fairy Tales, the art of human performance, where you're actually wired up and doing treadmills and understanding how that relates to science and the human body. So it's very, very different. It's very unique. It allows you to really explore not just what you're interested in, but allows you to explore something and maybe find something you never even realized you were interested in before. One of the things I think is important to understand about USC, which is pretty unique, it's a big campus. There are 18,000 undergraduate students, but there are 22,000 graduate students. The numbers of graduate schools in law and dentistry in medicine, architecture, are huge. And you would think as an undergrad that that wouldn't be good because how do you do research if the graduate students are here? But what USC has done that's particularly interesting is they've created a program called SOAR. It's a program that means Student Opportunity for Academic Research. So as an undergraduate student, what you would do is create your resume, letting people know what you're interested in studying or getting involved in. You would post it on the SOAR website, and professors 
get to go to look on this website to find undergraduate students to work with them in their research. So as an undergraduate, you can work and do research. And I find that very important. When I talk to my students, I really encourage them to do research as an undergrad, even though this is a major graduate school as well as undergraduate school, you will still have the opportunity to do undergraduate research. But this is something you have to do. When you come onto a campus like USC or any other campus, you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to reach out and get involved in things. No one is going to knock on your dorm door and tell you, come, I have a program for you. As I was trying the campus, my guide was a lovely woman from Salt Lake City, a senior who's very involved. Her majors are economics and international relations. And I asked her, what was it that made her get involved? What was the key for her? And she said, first semester, freshman year, she spoke to her advisor. She went to her advisor's office hours, sat there, and explained to her advisor what she was interested in. And her advisor was the one that really took her under the wing and said, I think you should be in this class with this professor. When you're in this class here, it's going to be too hard. Take a lighter class at the same time. So the advisor was the key to really opening doors here at USC. What you need to know for admissions into USC, other than your academic GPA and your, and your grades on your tests, there are a few key things. There is no early action or early decision here. But you can actually apply by December 1st, and that puts you into the pool for merit scholarships and academic scholarships. Applying to USC is something that must be done, as with all schools, on a timely manner. There is no early decision. There is no early action. However, while the deadline may be January 15th for admissions, if you apply by December 1st, you are put in the pool for scholarships, for merit, and for financial aid scholarships. So that is very important. Additionally, for financial aid needs, this school is need blind, which means they don't look at you and say, this student can't afford to come here. You're accepted, and then they find the money to allow you to come here. They also require you to do your FAFSA, your free application for federal student aid by February 1st, which is one month before the deadline. Plus, you must also do the CSS profile, which is on the College Board website. So you have a few more things to do at USC, like you do at most private schools. We'll require those two, the FAFSA and the CSS profile. But remember, for USC, that December 1st deadline is very important if you're interested in money to come here. 75% of the students at USC receive some sort of financial aid, and that's pretty huge. If you live in Los Angeles, there's a huge rivalry between USC and UCLA. When there is a football game between the two, and there's a football game every year between the two, the city goes crazy. And most students here, if you talk to LA students, they say, I'm going to UCLA or I'm going to USC. Los Angeles has many, many universities. USC is one of many, but this is a vibrant school. If you're looking for that big school spirit, like a Notre Dame, a University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, a Stanford, big school name, big school sports, but that also gives you the academic challenge that you want and the connections, the alum connections that you will use your entire life, then USC is a school you need to consider. And give me a call, Kathleen, and I can help you be a treasure.